Today I'll be reviewing the Logitech MX Keys. This is a professional quality wireless keyboard that has been designed for comfort and productivity. Prior to purchasing this, I had been using the Logitech Craft keyboard for about five years. So in this review, I'll also make some comparisons to that as well. Quick disclaimer, I purchased the MX Keys with my own money. This is not a sponsored review and all opinions are my own. First, let's go over some of the important features of the Logitech MX Keys. This keyboard features perfect stroke keys that are slightly concave and contour to your fingertips. The edges of the keys are smooth without any abrupt edges. The keys have a matte coating that feels nice. It provides the right amount of friction so the keys don't feel slippery or sticky. The keys are also very shallow and aren't raised too far off the surface. And the spacing between the keys is great. It allows your fingers to glide across the keyboard. The body of the MX keys is quite durable as keyboards go. It's made from a single metal plate, which makes it feel well built. It looks very stylish with a design that is on the minimalistic side without odd colors or forms. The typing area of the keyboard is quite thin at just under half an inch, though near the top of the keyboard, there is a large metal bar which spans the width of the keyboard. It increases the keyboard's maximum depth to nearly an inch. I believe this is where the battery and motion sensor are housed. This bar elevates the top end of the keyboard to angle it about five degrees. The underside of the MX keys has a rubbery grip, which doesn't slide around on your desk. The keyboard feels very stable on my desk. For added ergonomics, the MX keys can be paired with an optional palm rest that helps to reduce wrist strain, though I find the MX keys to be quite comfortable on its own. One of the best features about this keyboard is the backlighting. A proximity sensor detects your hands as they are approaching and illuminates the keys. When you leave your desk, the lights dim to save power. The backlighting brightness adapts to the lighting in your environment, but you can also control the brightness manually with keys on the keyboard or disable the backlighting altogether. I change the lighting in my office a lot for recording, so it's nice to have a keyboard I can easily see whether the room is very bright or very dark. Working on this keyboard at night is no problem. The MX Keys has an internal battery that charges with a 4.4 foot USB-C to USB-A cable that is included. The battery can last up to 10 days on a full charge, or if you disable the backlighting, it can last as long as five months. The keyboard has an LED in the top right that will turn green when the device is powered on, slowly strobe when charging, or turn red when low on battery. There's a switch on the back right edge to turn the keyboard on and off. Both the switch and the charging port are fairly easy to find just by feel. The Logitech Options Plus software can be used to customize the keyboard, and you can even reprogram the top row of keys for other functions. By backing up your settings to a Logitech account, you can use the same keyboard settings on multiple devices. The MX Keys is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android, and it can be paired with up to three devices at the same time. Each key has its own LED showing which device the keyboard is currently linked to. You can pair this device to your computer using the included Logitech USB-A dongle, or you can connect it via Bluetooth. I use Bluetooth and I don't notice any lag or disruptions in my typing. The maximum wireless range is 10 meters. If you pair it with an MX Master 3 mouse or any other Logitech mouse with flow capabilities, this keyboard can automatically toggle to become active on multiple computers. Simply move the mouse to the other computer and the keyboard follows it. Best of all, everything comes in environmentally responsible packaging. The MX Keys is $119.99 retail with a one year limited warranty. I bet you're wondering why I chose this keyboard over the other options out there. First, I've gone through a lot of keyboards, mostly cheap plastic ones, so I wanted a keyboard that would last a long time. And second, I had already fallen in love with the performance of the Logitech Craft. The Craft keyboard is very similar to the MX Keys, but I will elaborate more on that later. Like the Craft, the MX Keys looks nice, it's very low profile, and it has some very useful features. I like the aesthetic and feel of the thin, elegant keys and it's very convenient to toggle from typing on my desktop to typing on my smartphone or my secondary computer with the press of a button. Unfortunately, after about five years of heavy use, the control key on the craft broke off. 
Yeah, I save a lot. Anyhow, Logitech didn't want to or wasn't able to help me replace the keycap because they said my warranty had expired, and I couldn't find any replacement keycaps online. I only had two options, buy a new Logitech Craft for $199 or get something else. Honestly, I was kind of irritated that I had to replace an entire expensive keyboard for just one broken key, and I never really used the dial extensively, so I knew I could do without another Craft, at least at that price point. Lucky for me, Logitech offers the MX keys, which is pretty much the Craft without a dial on it. I found one with an open box discount at Best Buy for around $80 and snatched it up. If you want an in-depth explanation of what the dial on the Craft can do, check out my review of the Craft keyboard. The dial has many preset functions for a variety of creative apps like Photoshop, and I had planned to use it more, but I never really broke my habit of using the mouse. It's a cool idea, just not for me. What I did find it useful for was invoking shortcuts, but the options for that were very limited. Not long after getting the craft, I purchased a Stream Deck, which I found to be more effective for invoking shortcuts. Ultimately, I only really used the dial to control the volume of my music player and pause the playback. Honestly, that's really the only thing I miss about the craft. My workaround is to just reprogram the function keys on the MX to control the volume and play pause. So far, the experience I've had with both keyboards is similar enough to where I don't feel a major difference. I feel like I got basically the same keyboard, just without a dial I don't really need. The MX Keys is about half the price of the Craft, so the dial is definitely not worth that much unless you really like it. There are more versatile options for making fine adjustments to sliders like the Stream Deck and other similar controllers that might be a better use of your money. Fortunately, I can still use the Craft on my other devices, which don't rely as heavily on the control key. I just partially taped the key on so it doesn't fall off and get lost. The key still works, it's just very wiggly. Aside from that one superficial issue, the craft is still going strong after five years. These aren't keyboards you'll need to replace often. Next, let's explore some more of the similarities and differences between the MX keys and the craft, in case you still haven't made your mind up between the two. First, the craft weighs more because of the metal dial. It's 2.11 pounds compared to the MX Keys, which is only 1.78 pounds. Not a huge difference, but for an already heavy keyboard, it might matter to you. The Craft is also taller, deeper, and bulkier because of the dial. The dial shifts the weight of the keyboard to the left side, whereas the MX Keys is more balanced. The Craft is lighter in color with less contrast to the backlight compared to the black version of the MX Keys. But there are other colors of the MX Keys available. The illuminated letters seem to stand out more on the MX keys. The Craft backlight spills outside the edges of the keys, which looks a little sloppy, whereas the MX for the most part does not have that issue, at least when viewing it from a normal angle. The MX keys has labels to differentiate the easy switch 1, 2, 3 buttons from the other number keys. That makes it more obvious what those keys do. On that note, none of the key labels have worn off like they have on other keyboards I've owned. Of course, this is because the labels are actually translucent and not painted on. The MX keys take slightly more force to press down, but the keys feel more stable. The Craft keys wiggle a lot. The Craft keystroke sound is higher pitched and louder. The wiggling of the keys contributes a lot to this noise. The MX keys are dampened with a lower pitched noise. The matte surface on the craft feels a little smoother with less friction, but this could be due to using it for several years. The MX keys feel slightly rougher with more grip. The craft has slightly less latency than the MX keys, but I don't really feel a difference in everyday typing. The MX keys is compatible with a range of devices and operating systems, whereas the craft is only fully compatible with Windows, but partially compatible with everything else. The newer Logitech Options Plus software works with the MX keys, but at this point the Craft is not supported. Currently, no new features are available in Options Plus that aren't available in the regular Options software, but that may change. A feature I'd love to see is the ability to program multi-action shortcuts to the keys. Another very important consideration is that the Craft had some minor battery degradation after the first few years, but that's to be expected from a rechargeable internal battery. 
Even so, the craft still charges and doesn't need to be recharged very often. I don't know if the MX keys will experience the same degradation, but my guess is probably so. If this matters to you, you might want to choose a keyboard that has a replaceable battery. And of course, I do have some concern that the control key could become worn to the point of coming off like it did on the craft. To be fair, I was using the control key much more heavily than most people would. For instance, I was holding it down for long periods of time while recording my screen. I no longer do this, so I'm not as concerned about breaking off a key on the MX keys, but it certainly doesn't make me feel very secure knowing that if I do break a key, I won't be able to replace it. As you can see, there's a lot going on inside each key. Some of the plastic, which was very fine, broke off, so the key cannot attach firmly anymore. A keyboard of this build quality and price aimed at professionals should really have a longer warranty, or at least an option to replace the keys. It's one thing to provide environmentally responsible packaging, but a better way to be sustainable would be to provide a way to make minor repairs. This isn't exactly an easy keyboard to recycle since it's a combination of metal and plastic with an internal battery. Because the keys are so thin and easily broken, if you're the messy type and you find yourself cleaning your keyboard often, this may not be a good choice for you. In conclusion, I'm very happy with the quality and performance of the MX keys. It's a great replacement for the craft at a more affordable price. I highly recommend this if you're looking for a stylish, low-profile keyboard that is packed full of productivity-enhancing features. There's a link to buy one in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and stay creative.